Hey, what's up, fellas? We're back out here at White Sands Proving Grounds, and we're back on the high emissivity coating testing. And one of the reasons why you would want to make a high emissivity coating can be examined through the analogy of a campfire. What's hotter, the flames or the coals? Typically, a big pile of hot coals is going to put off more heat than the flame itself of a similar size fire. So wearing a black shirt versus a white shirt in the summertime. We want our furnace walls to be like that white t-shirt and bounce that energy off. Okay, so we're gonna do a test with no crucible or specimens in the furnace because I don't want them affecting the temperature readings. We only want to be getting readings off of the high emissivity coating. This is the thicker coating that allows a very thick coat without any spalling. You can see it's quite thick and it covers up that black oxide, the iron oxide region a lot better. This very white region is the stone and then this black region is that iron oxide region. Okay, we are going to test the IR hat, which is kind of a new invention I'm working on. And I've noticed when I'm doing this work that I can see directly down into the top of my crucible. And that means two things. One thing is that a very large amount of energy is radiating directly out of this hole via infrared radiation. Once you hit 500 Kelvin, the predominant mode of energy transfer shifts from convection and actual impingement to IR infrared heat. If we look here at a simplified analysis of the actual square inches available and the kilowatts pumped into the furnace, we have about 75,000 watts of power is going into a surface area of 216.7 square inches. So we come up with about 346 watts per square inch of available energy in this system. The area of the hole on the top, I was wrong there, I guessed 5,000. The area of the hole is 9.6 times that 346 watts per inch comes out to 3,322 watts of energy, especially in the infrared band that is just flying right out the hole. And usually the top of your crucible is one of the coldest areas there is. So by having a block of material above the hole on our furnace and letting the flames come out perpendicular to the discharge, we are now going to cause a rebound, a reflection, and also an emitter source. So there's two things that are gonna happen. We're gonna have infrared radiation reflecting off the walls, hitting this, bouncing back, not all of it, but we're gonna put a high emissivity coating on this. Secondly, the jet of heat flying out of this thing is gonna hit that wall, bring it up to emitter temperatures, which is also going to cause a significant amount of infrared radiation to beam back to the workload where we want it the most. I'm even thinking about making one of these somewhat of a, a subtle parabolic mirror so it focuses a dot about that big around like a magnifying glass of infrared heat. So that's one of the other things that we're working on here in this ex experiment. And there is nothing in the furnace because we only want to get readings from the high emissivity coating. I don't want to be messing that up. So. prep it very good so some of it's flaking off the nozzle part there but on the body I got it nice and clean and you can see the adherence or the cohesion or adhesion is very well it's nothing's flaking off and this is what it looks like without the paint that whole box is usually lit up with glowing metal from the heat so this is protecting that metal 
It is probably taking away from a little bit of the air preheat, but I think we're okay. I'd rather have the protected metal situation like we see right here. So we're not burning up burner in an undue amount of time. So it's performing very well in that aspect. Everything's looking good. We're just testing out the fire hat to see whether or not the material, the coating itself can withstand that. We are running at higher pressure today. You see that little bubble in the hose? We're about to lose air. That hose is about to blow up on me any second here. And right about there, we lost air pressure. Kind of glad I caught that on camera so we could see what it looks like. Not an ideal situation, um, but we got it back up and running pretty quick. All right, we got to wait 15 minutes before we take another temperature reading. We lost air there, so Murphy's Law is prevailing today. We already lost a camera battery, we lost the compressor. Let's see if we can pull this off yet. All right, I haven't done a fuel consumption calculation to determine the actual power output here, but we're in the order of 70 to 100 kilowatts here. Quite a bit of power. And just to show you that, you see how I ramp it up. You gotta add a little bit of fuel, add a little bit of air, add a little bit of fuel, add a little bit of air, and you stage up. This thing has four stages. The power level is so high that we gotta ramp up in that many uh, moves there. So definitely a powerful little burner. This thing can do about 500 kilowatts on diesel. So this is what we have. This is the fire hat. So in conclusion, this test was botched. It's a total loss. The iron oxide concoction or whatever this material is that's formed, the iron oxide is formed with some of the, the slags and the stone and it's produced this corrosive substance. Um, we do get up to 2,800 degrees today, but we do not hit that 2,933 degree mark again. It's just not able to do it. You can see here the coating is withstanding the torture inside this combustion zone very well. No flaking at all. The flaking you see on the nozzle is because it was covered in oil. It wasn't dressed very well. Here's some external temperatures to look at. Essentially what happened was is the smooth surface of that oxide material allows the potassium water glass, the potassium silicate, to flow down like uh, water running down a wall, whereas the stone kind of grips it and it helps it stick in there, I think, a little bit, maybe better. I'm not totally sure what the problem is. All I know is when we were done, there was no coating left on the furnace walls, which explains why we only got up to the 2,800 degrees. Right here, it's showing 2,600, but that's attributed to the rapid cool down. That thing is hot. Oh, I can finally get these earplugs out. All right, so here's a quick before. You can see some of our coating did make it down to the bottom there. So the coating really only survived where we had natural concrete exposed. So we've got a plug in place. We're gonna grind all this mess off. So, do not burn out your steel forms. Don't do it, it's not worth it. It's a terrible idea. I tell you what though, this new coating worked great protecting this hinge. All right, fellas, so the whole day was a loss. We're gonna add some liner as well. This is what the corrosive activity looks like. Look how that's like boiling down into my concrete. So this iron oxide mixture is extremely destructive. The coating did stand up pretty good on the combustion housing. Very thick material. I do like this sand composition a lot better. So we added like one inch of refractory liner there. I felt like that was a little too thin. 800 degrees on the exterior and we're losing too much heat. Too much radiation. So we had to fix that. Plus I need a surface that will receive the high emissivity coating without letting it melt down the wall. So this is where we're at. Murphy's Law prevailed. The test was botched by iron oxide getting all over the walls of the furnace and 
somehow allowing the refractory emissivity coating to just slip down the walls. The This coating will only stick to concrete refractories. It won't stick to these oxides that's caused by the iron and stone reaction. We're getting some type of mineral reaction going on there, and it's corrosive. So we're going to have to revisit this again. i got to let this thing cure for a few days, and we'll be back at this again trying to hit that 2,900 degrees. Here's a quick look at the 2,400 degree fire bricks that I was using for the fire hat. You can see they completely melted, but look at the coating. The coating is still there. So as long as it's on stone, it's survivable. This black stuff here is the iron oxide material that's spraying up out of the furnace due to the metal artifacts still in place. It did start to take on its own concave shape. But this iron oxide stuff is detrimental to the process, so... That's what we got. The, the fire hat's going to have to be made out of something like this right here. Very high temp material. This is just not suitable. But the coating did withstand the torture for the most part.